Today we'll go over the example of decreasing liquidity in Uniswap v3, and we'll be following the code from the official documentation. So inside the documentation, I'll scroll down and then copy this code. Inside the code editor, we've been using the contract called liquidity examples. So I'll paste the code inside this contract. I'll scroll down and then paste the code. Next, I'll remove some of the comments. Okay, for our example, we'll be decreasing all of the liquidity. So I'll rename this function to decrease liquidity. Token ID, we're storing it in a state variable, so we don't need to feed it as input. Instead, for the input, we'll feed in liquidity. This will specify the amount of liquidity we're going to decrease by. We're not going to need the output amount 0 and amount 1. This is the actual amount of tokens that were decreased. However, we'll just keep it as is. Okay, we'll scroll down and we're not going to need these. Okay, the thing that we need to do to decrease liquidity in Uniswap B3 is to prepare a parameter, prepare a struct called decrease liquidity params, and then call the function decrease liquidity. For token ID, we stored it in a state variable, so we'll just leave it as is. Liquidity, we'll pass it from the input. Amount zero min, the minimum amount of token zero that we will be able to withdraw after calling decrease liquidity. Amount one min, the minimum amount of token one that we can withdraw after we call the function decrease liquidity. For this example, we'll keep it simple and set it to zero. Now in production, you would probably not want to set this to zero. And deadline, the deadline of this transaction we'll set it to block.timestamp. And then we call the function decrease liquidity on the non-fungible position manager. And this will return amount zero and amount one. These are the amount of tokens that we can withdraw. Notice here that I set the amount of tokens that we can withdraw. When we call the function decrease liquidity, it doesn't actually transfer the tokens back to this contract. To actually withdraw the tokens from Uniswap B3, after you call the function decrease liquidity, we'll have to call the function collect on Uniswap B3. So after you call decrease liquidity, we'll call the function collect all fees, and this will call collect, and this will actually withdraw the tokens from Uniswap B3. I'll show you this later in the test. Anyways, scrolling back down to our code, we're not gonna need send to owner, so I'll remove this. And then for this example, I'll just console log amount zero and amount one. Console.log amount zero amount zero and likewise for amount one console log amount one amount one now before we call this function decrease liquidity how do we know how much liquidity we can withdraw to answer this question i'll scroll up and there is a function where we can get the liquidity from the token id So inside the function, the internal function create deposit, you can see here that we can get the liquidity by calling non-fungible position manager dot position passing in the token ID. So I'll copy this code. And then we'll create a new function. Scrolling down, we'll create a new function called function get liquidity. And for the input, we'll pass in the token ID uint underscore token ID since we already have a state variable as well this will be external view returns uint128 we're returning uint128 because liquidity is represented as uint128 and then we'll paste the code that we copied and then we're not gonna need this we're also not gonna need the address token1 here we're only gonna need liquidity and then return liquidity. Okay, that completes the function get liquidity and we're now ready to call the function decrease liquidity. First, let's try compiling this contract. Open my terminal and then compile the contract by typing mpx hardhat compile. Okay, the contract failed to compile, so let me go fix this error. Here, liquidity has to be uint128, so I'll change uint 256 to 128 save it and we'll try compiling again and our contract compiled successfully the next step is to write the test to execute the function decrease liquidity so inside the test folder we'll continue working on liquidity.test.js open it and 
to get ourselves started, first I'll copy this code and then scroll down and then paste it. I'll remove the dot skip and I'll name this test to decrease liquidity. So what we're going to do here is get the token ID, get the liquidity, and then call the function decrease liquidity passing in the liquidity. So we first get the token ID. Next, we'll need to get the liquidity by calling const liquidity is equal to a weight liquidity examples dot get liquidity then passing in the token ID. So once we have liquidity, next we can call the function liquidity example dot decrease liquidity. And here we pass in the liquidity that we just got from a little liquidity. Now earlier I said that when we call this function decrease liquidity, it doesn't actually transfer the tokens. And to show you this, I'll console log the balance of DAI and USDC. I'll put some logs so that we'll be able to easily identify what we're logging. Console log decrease liquidity, and then we'll actually log the balance of DAI and USDC. Console.log. Here I'll use string interpolation, say DAI, dollar sign, curly braces, A weight, DAI dot balance of liquidity, examples dot address and we'll do the same for usdc usdc a weight usdc balance of liquidity examples dot address okay that completes the test for calling decreased liquidity when this test runs the balance of die in usdc should be zero now to actually withdraw the tokens we said that we'll need to call collect on uniswap b3 and one way we can do it is by calling collect all of these. So what I'll do is I'll take this code and then paste it after calling decrease liquidity and then remove the skip. So what's gonna happen when we execute the test is it's gonna execute decrease liquidity and afterwards this test will run to collect all fees. After calling collect all fees, let's log the actual amount of die in USDC in the contract. So this will be collect fees and then get the balance of die and usdc before we run the test let's not run this test for increased liquidity current range so i'll put it dot skip and we're now ready to run the test so i'll open my terminal clear the logs and then we'll run the test by typing npx hard hat test the name of the test is test liquidity.test.js I'm getting the error get liquidity is not a function so let me go fix that inside my contract fix the misspelling get liquidity and then I'll run the test again okay our test passed let's take a look at the logs first the test for decreased liquidity passed and let's take a look at the log for decreased liquidity notice that after we call the function decrease liquidity the balance of die inside the contract and the balance of usdc is still equal to zero however after we call decrease liquidity and then we call collect all fees then our balance of die and usdc changed this was an example of how to call decrease liquidity and then actually withdraw the token by calling collect on uniswap b3